The world can be a dark and unsettling place. And sometimes truth is stranger and more terrifying than fiction. Prepare yourself for a journey into the dark and disturbing corners of true crime. These are 10 lesser known horrifying true stories that will leave you questioning the world around you. Some involve bizarre deaths, others chilling disappearances, and all of them remain shrouded in mystery. Stanford University, 1974, a place that represents knowledge, progress, safety, but within the hallowed halls of the Stanford Memorial Church, evil found a foothold. 19-year-old Arliss Perry went to the church to pray. She never made it out. Her body was discovered, posed in a way that sent chills down the spines of even the most seasoned investigators. Ritualistic, that's the word they used. Was it the work of a cult, a deranged individual obsessed with the occult? For decades, Arliss's case cast a long shadow over the Stanford campus. In 2018, DNA technology identified the killer as a security guard who had been at the church that night. Arliss's story is a chilling reminder that darkness can lurk even in the most unexpected places. Imagine a town so small, so quiet, that its name would be forever associated with unimaginable horror. That town is Snowtown, South Australia. Between 1992 and 1999, a string of disappearances plagued the area. People vanished without a trace, leaving behind worried families and unanswered questions. The truth, when it finally unraveled, was far more gruesome than anyone could have imagined. Hidden away in an old bank vault, authorities made a chilling discovery barrels. But these barrels weren't filled with ordinary contents. They contained the dismembered remains of victims, their bodies decomposed, their stories silenced. The ringleader John Bunting was a man of pure evil, orchestrating a reign of terror fueled by twisted motives. He preyed on the vulnerable, manipulating others to join his gruesome game. The details of the murders, the torture, the utter depravity shocked the nation. The Snowtown murders remain one of Australia's most chilling cases, a stark reminder of the darkness that can fester in the shadows. Philadelphia, 1957, a cardboard box discarded in a field. Inside, a heartbreaking discovery. The body of a young boy, his innocence stolen, his identity a mystery. This is the story of the boy in the box. Despite countless efforts, posters plastered on every wall, his face etched in the minds of investigators, his name remained unknown. Who was this child? Where did he come from? And who could have committed such a heartless act? Theories abound. Was he the victim of a family tragedy, his existence erased out of shame or fear? Or was he the target of a predator, his life taken in a moment of unspeakable cruelty? Decades have passed, technology has advanced, but the boy in the box remains unidentified. His case serves as a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the desperate need for answers. He deserves justice, he deserves a name. Chapter four, the Keddie Cabin, Murders terror in the woods. Imagine a family vacation turned nightmare. That's what happened in 1981 in the quiet mountain town of Keddie, California. Inside cabin 28, a family's life was about to be shattered. Glenna Sharp, her three children and a friend were spending their days in the serene wilderness. But on that fateful night, evil found its way inside their cabin walls. The scene that greeted investigators was nothing short of horrific. Glenna, her son John, and his friend Dana were found murdered, their bodies bound with electrical cord. The brutality of the crime sent shockwaves through the small community, but the horror didn't end there. Glenna's daughter, Tina, was missing, vanished without a trace. Years later, a portion of her skull was found, adding another layer of tragedy and mystery to the already baffling case. Whispers of a cover-up of a botched investigation continue to this day. The Keddy Cabin murders remain an open wound, a chilling reminder that even in idyllic settings, darkness can lurk. Chapter five, the lonely death of Joyce Carol Vincent. In the heart of London, a bustling city of millions, a life ended in silence. Joyce Carol Vincent, once full of life, dreams, aspirations, died alone in her apartment. But the most unsettling part, it took years for anyone to notice. Joyce's story is a stark reminder of the isolating nature of modern life. How could someone vanish without a trace, their absence unnoticed for years? The discovery of her body, 
decomposed in front of a television still playing, sent shockwaves through the city and beyond. The circumstances surrounding Joyce's life and death are shrouded in questions. She had a job, a family, friends. What led to her isolation? Why didn't anyone notice she was gone? Joyce's story is a tragic tale of loneliness, a stark reminder to cherish our connections and reach out to those around us. Chapter 6 The vanishing of Brian Schaffer lost in the crowd one night, one crowded bar, one young man who walked in and seemingly vanished into thin air. This is the baffling case of Brian Schaffer, Columbus, Ohio, 2006. Brian, a medical student with a bright future ahead of him, went out with friends. Security footage captured him entering the bar, laughing, seemingly carefree. But when the night ended, Brian wasn't with his friends. He wasn't anywhere. The search for Brian was extensive. Every nook and cranny of the bar was examined, every patron interviewed, every camera angle scrutinized. The mystery deepened. The bar, located in a basement, had limited exits, all covered by cameras, yet there was no sign of Brian leaving. Years have turned into decades, and the mystery of what happened to Brian Schaffer remains. Did he leave the bar unnoticed? Was he the victim of foul play? The lack of answers continues to haunt Brian's family and friends. Chapter 7. A chilling voicemail, a desperate plea for help, then silence. This is the unsettling story of Henry McCabe. 2015, Minnesota. Henry McCabe leaves a voicemail for his wife. But this is no ordinary message. His voice is filled with terror, his words barely discernible over strange, guttural sounds. Then the phone cuts off. Henry's wife is immediately alarmed. Where is he? What's happening? The search for Henry McCabe begins, but it's met with silence. Weeks turn into months. Hope dwindles, then a tragic discovery. Henry's body is found in a nearby lake. But the circumstances surrounding his death are as murky as the lake water itself. Was it an accident, suicide, or something more sinister? The voicemail with its haunting sounds and Henry's obvious distress remains a chilling piece of the puzzle. What happened to Henry McCabe? The answers lost somewhere in the murky depths. Chapter eight. The Jameson family disappearance, lost in the Oklahoma hills, a family vacation, a remote stretch of Oklahoma wilderness, then silence. The disappearance of the Jameson family is a chilling reminder that even in the vast openness, secrets can remain hidden. 2009, Bobby and Sherilyn Jameson, along with their six-year-old daughter Madison, set out on a trip. Days later, their truck is found abandoned. Inside, their belongings, wallets, phones, even their dog. But of the family, no sign, theories abound. A drug deal gone wrong, a robbery, or did they stumble upon something they shouldn't have, something that cost them their lives? The mystery deepens with each passing season. Four agonizing years pass. Then, a grim discovery. The skeletal remains of the Jameson family are found in a remote area not far from where their truck was discovered, but their cause of death, unexplained. The mystery of what happened to the Jamesons in those Oklahoma hills continues to haunt investigators and the public alike. Chapter 9, The Circleville Letter Writer Whispers of Fear Imagine opening your mailbox to find a letter, unsigned, filled with threats, exposing your deepest secrets. This was the terrifying reality for residents of Circleville, Ohio in the late 1970s. The letters started subtly, spreading gossip, turning neighbor against neighbor. But soon they escalated, becoming more sinister, more menacing. The writer, hiding in the shadows, seemed to know intimate details about the townspeople's lives. Fear gripped Circleville. Who was this puppet master pulling the strings, this phantom playing with their lives? Suspicions fell on a disgruntled postal worker, but the letters continued even after he was imprisoned. To this day, the true identity of the Circleville letter writer remains a mystery. Were they a scorned lover? A bored mischief maker? Or something more sinister? The letters may have stopped, but the chilling echo of unanswered questions lingers. Chapter 10. The disappearance of Zeb Quinn. A cryptic clue, a late night rendezvous, a cryptic clue left behind and then silence. The disappearance of Zeb Quinn is as baffling as it is heartbreaking. 19 year old Zeb Quinn clocks out of work and heads to meet a friend. He never makes it. Two weeks later, his car is found abandoned. 
On the back window, a strange drawing, a pair of lips, and an exclamation point. Inside the car, another unsettling discovery, a live puppy. Years later, Robert Jason Owens becomes the prime suspect. Out row the unanswered questions. 10 stories, 10 lives forever changed. These chilling stories may not be as widely known, but are just as horrifying and perplexing as any mystery you've heard before. They remind us that the line between safety and danger can be razor thin. Stay vigilant and always question the world around you, because sometimes the most unsettling mysteries are the ones that hit closest to home.